Hey, what is going on everybody and welcome to Fantasia for today. We're gonna be jumping into another session of Epic 7L today. Got another Guild War for you guys. Going up against the Guild S Requiem, which is actually quite suitable for today's <laughs> debut. Now of course, before we get into that debut, we have the joke of the day. A teenager brings her new boyfriend home to meet her parents. They are disgusted by his overall delinquent appearance. After he leaves, the girl's mother says, Sweetie, he doesn't seem to be a very nice boy. Oh, please, Mom, replied the girl. If he wasn't nice, why would he be doing 500 hours of community service? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and jump into this first battle, shall we? So, for the top team, we're going up against Fire Caloric, Spirit Eye Selene, and Apocalypse Ravi. Now, I heard you guys in the comments. I have made sure to put Jacko not in the back, and we're going to have Para in the back, because I actually finally remember that, uh, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to all of you guys and your reminders in the comments that Jacko has a passive and uh, she will give the backline Para a chance to stun everything, which will be quite useful. Uh, we're going to bring in Jacko to the fight. She is going to be on Merciless Glutton on some standard damage builds, you know, speed and pen. Uh, we're going to go after the Calric. Hopefully, if we finish him off, then we can go after the Spirit Eye Selene and then, uh, you know, double attack into her, get rid of her. Watcher Shuri is giving everyone a speed imprint, not that it really matters, because we're using him for his damage. And with his damage, he should be able to finish off the Apocalypse Ravi. Now, if I wanted to make sure that he killed here, I could give him a damage artifact, which I might actually end up doing. Let's go ahead and give him Opsig's portrait, right? Just for that extra bit of damage. Why not? All right, for the bottom team, we have C. Lilius, Zahak, and uh, Pirate Captain Flan. So going into this... Um, a lot of you guys have been saying in the comments that with Requiem Rowana, uh, she could actually be a decent anti-cleave unit, right? If you have someone who can cut, like DJB, Dilibet, um, Benny Maru, someone like that that cuts and they take the turn, then Rowana will take the turn along with them and then you can kind of reset your opponent's skills. And I think that's a pretty good idea. The only problem is a lot of openers, like Ron, give immunity, or Para has Restrict, which prevents Rowana from jumping up in combat readiness, um, it's going to prove to be a bit difficult. But we're going to try her out here against C. Lilius. Uh, we're going to try to cut with DJ Bassar and push up the Rowana so that she can reset the Pirate Captain Flan and Zahawk. I know it's not a true cleave team on the other side. We'll be trying her against some other units. We'll see how it works out. Um, but yeah, we'll... we'll We'll just play it out, right? And I have Ed over here to, again, kind of simulate going for an anti-cleave type of setup. Ed is pretty good into debuff units like Pirate Captain Flan and C. Lilius anyway, so it's a natural pick in RTA. But let's go ahead and jump into it and see what we can do. Quite excited for both these uh, matches here. Alright, that... Okay, we're definitely outspeeding that Calric. That's pretty nice. Uh, let's go for the S2 here. This should push up the Jacko. Very nice. We got the Restrict on the A-Ravi. Ooh, we landed all the debuffs. That's great. Now we can attack buff everybody, including the Watcher Shuri, which is huge. And let's go ahead and finish off the Calric so that we can S1 into the uh, Spirit Eye Selene. All right, Merciless Glutton is already pushing up Watcher Shuri quite a bit. Uh, so I don't really need the, uh, the Sashay. So Jacko can easily finish off the Spirit Eye Selene with that double hit, and now Watcher Shuri with Portrait should be able to one-shot the A-Ravi. Let's see here. Oh yeah, 35,000 damage. <laughs> Bit overkill? Probably. Alright. Uh, oh, wait a minute. DJ B is actually going first. Oh, wow, this Sea Lilius is not fast. That actually kind of messes me up a little bit. But let's go with it. Let's try to stun this Pirate Captain Juan. So Rowana, see, she boosts up her combat readiness right there. Uh, with Ed, we might as well go ahead and finish off the Zahawk, I think. Zahawk is probably the only unit that can really kill something here. 
one in a minute. Oh, oh my god, it's a pretty tinky Zahog. Alright, let's go for the S3. Let's see if we can reset everybody. If we can reset here, that'd be nice. Ooh, actually... I wonder what would happen if you used her into a Zeo opener, right? And then you had someone that followed up afterwards? I mean, Rowana might get silenced, but... Maybe you go for a resist and, uh, resist build against Zeo is kind of, uh, kind of a waste, isn't it? I mean, even my DJB gets debuffed by, um, by Zeo's, so. But maybe if some, if you're able to use Rowana somehow after, after, uh, an opener, right? It could work out. Okay, so... Apparently, the Rowana... Okay, so Rowana might be actually tied... Yeah, Rowana's tied to my Ed for some reason. That's actually pretty funny. Let's go ahead and Soul Burn here. I think we'll just... Pirate Captain Flan has her S3, so let's go for her. When she goes for the S3, she'll trigger Ed and his equivalent exchange. Alright, uh, Pirate Captain Flan has the highest HP. Oh, there we go. She actually got that defense break, which is pretty nice, because I think Ed should be able to counter here. There we go, look at that, equivalent exchange, she still has a defense break on her, so there we go, now we get to cleanse everybody of our bombs, and we'll push up the Ed, when Ed takes another turn, it'll push up the Rowana, so she's turn cycling quite a bit, she's kind of doing what she's meant to do, it's kind of nice, but again, I feel like if I had anyone else on this team, it would work out a bit better. Good job, Ed, as the DPS there, finishing off the Sea of Lilius. Okay, so that was kind of weird, because the Sea of Lilius was pretty slow, but the whole team was actually geared and pretty bulky, so it's not like she was missing a piece or anything. Uh, we're going to go ahead and try this Rowana out on another fast opener. Alright, let's go ahead and jump into our second match, going up against this tower here. Now, I think this tower is going to be a Quite an interesting test for our Rowana, because we have Emil Kalric, uh, Rimuru, and Spirit Eye Selene on the other side. And normally this type of tower is pretty tricky to deal with, because Rimuru is going to be cutting, he's going to be S3-ing, you're going to have to tank it down with Crown, now is it impossible to beat that team? No, uh, there are other avenues around it, but I'm thinking if we can reset that Rimuru, along with that Spirit Eye Selene, and the ML Calric, you essentially just skip out on their entire first turn. Now, what other unit could do this? Lua. You could just Soul Burn Lua and do the same thing. However, uh, if Rowana can also do this while having something like C. Lilius, for example, on your team, facilitating more damage, more dual attacks, more support, uh, then it could work out in the end. We'll see uh, We'll see what happens. Now, I'm going to bring in Spectre Tenebria as my DPS. She's also going to be holding Book along with my Rowana. So with this... Um, Spectre Tenebria can essentially just soul burn and destroy something like Spirit Eye Selene, and then we can go ahead and like stun the Rimuru or whatever. I think it's going to be pretty good, uh, especially if Rowana actually does fully reset everybody on the other side. I mean, with 200-something effectiveness, you'd hope that she does reset <laughs> and do her one and only job. Uh, for the bottom team, we have C. Lilius, A. Ravi, and Meru. So, some of you guys have been recommending to me to use uh, Summertime Iceria with Summer Break Charlotte. And I think it's a pretty good idea. So, Para is going to be my initiator here. We're going to be using her to trigger uh, Summertime Iceria. And Iceria is going to go ahead and put the... Uh, bombs on everybody, which is going to be quite nice, and we can soul burn her S1 for free to attack something to plant another bomb, which will trigger Summer Break Charlotte's dual attack, uh, so hopefully we defense break some things, Summer Break, uh, Summertime Assyria can go ahead and stun everybody, trigger the bombs, and then Summer Break Charlotte can go ahead and clean up. If we can get that Ravi stunned, I think we're going to be in good shape, but only time will tell, so let's go ahead and see if we can actually make that a reality, or if everything's just going to 15%. Alright, so Rowana goes ahead and takes the turn with my C. Lilius here. Let's go ahead and debuff everybody. Now, just in case things go wrong, oh, that, that's silly resisted, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and provoke the Rimuru. Never mind, he's gonna resist, so that's gonna bode well for my Rowana here. <laughs> hey, we already got two 15% out of the way, right? So let's go. Marijuana. Okay, I think we had reset everybody. I'm not 100% sure. We did push everyone pretty far back, though. 
Uh, Spirit Isolate, yeah, so they're just going for the regular hits there. Now, what kind of sucks is that Spirit Isolate is going to be able to go next turn, and I don't like that. Nice little hit from the Rowana. Oh, actually, the Rowana's uh, extra damage finishing, uh, finishing her off, so that's pretty good. Rimuru, I believe, was reset. Yep, so he has one more turn until he gets his S3. Now, Hand Guy, he can just go ahead and pop his S3 and cleanse. Uh, immunity and get the attack buff. I don't really like that, so let's go ahead and try to get some damage in on him. Otherwise, I think Rowana's gonna die, and <laughs> I don't really want that. So, let's go for a hit on Rimuru. Okay, not not bad, not bad. If I can go ahead and... Oh, wait, no. Defense Break wouldn't matter, right? Because the Calric would cleanse it. Just get some damage in on that Rimuru. Should be fine. Ooh, that's actually some good damage. Pretty good damage, given that my Rowana's not on full attack everything. Um, now the, unf Ooh, the unfortunate thing is... We are in trouble here. Come on, Spectre, break those barriers, please. Okay, we broke one barrier. Can I break the other barrier on Calric? Okay, there we go. So that's going to be a little less damage coming in on Rowana. If she goes down, I'm going to have to surrender. I really don't want to have to do that. Oh, oh, I think she's going to go down. Shoot. Well, that didn't quite work out, did it? My Spectre was a little too slow there. I think even if I yield, she's going to be gone. So, yep, that's a little too late, unfortunately. Uh, but, well, yeah, we actually do end up winning. Uh, I guess in concept it does work. You stall out for a single turn. But it's just my follow-up with Spectre Tenebria was not fast no, enough. No, Should have brought in somebody else to try that out. Um, but it's okay. <laughs> we'll we'll be able to try out Rowana another time as well. She bit, she did her job in in two Guild Wars, right? Two two fights. Okay, let's go ahead and try this one out. We see Lilius is hot on her heels, but Summertime Assyria should be able to cut here. Yep, so there we go, got the bombs on everybody. We got an RNL proc too, which is not too bad. The restrict on the A Robbie is pretty huge. I think it's on the mirror as well, yeah. So they can't really be doing shenanigans here. Um, I can try to go for a stun. Never mind, she's going to counterattack. Um great. Magic for friends as well. Oh my god, Isiria just oh my god, Isiria just went down. She's just gone. Um, meanwhile, our Charlotte, we seem to be in danger, huh? Can we try to stun the Ravi? Oh, there we go, got a stun there, nice. Got some extra hits there. Uh, we got enhanced dual attack, what do we go for? I think we just finish off the Lilius, right? Just finish off the Lilius here, go for an S3. Well, that's unfortunate, we probably shouldn't have hit the mirror. I wanted to try to stun her there, but maybe that was a little too risky. Uh, Perry gets to go, we have another enhanced dual attack, so let us just go for a hit on the Robbie. There we go. So Charlotte putting in the work. Hopefully we don't get crit here. Okay, there we go. Because we didn't have Escort buff up, right? Uh, let's go for... I don't think Meru has... Yeah, she doesn't have Magic for Friends again, I don't think. Although we could just play it safe, we could just go for a soul burn here. Just play it safe, right? Just stun her. And we'll just chop chop. The bombs will detonate, and we get to chop chop again. There we go. Very nice. <laughs> Unfortunately, we couldn't see the Summertime Assyria um, combo off there, but I think this is a rather solid combo. Uh, if you weren't going into Meru, there's uh, way less RNG. You know, Magic for Friends and Counter Meru is is pretty toxic. Alright, well, since our Rowana went down, we're gonna have to fight the Stronghold without her, but it should be fine. I was gonna use Rowana in the top team against Aeola to see what she would be like in terms of fighting her, uh, but it's okay. We're actually gonna have some fun here. So Aeola, Aeroz, and Arby are in the top team. I'm gonna bring in my Ahmed. Ahmed's gonna have a um, fan of light and dark, and we're gonna go ahead and buff our Lilibet here. Now, I kind of tweaked some of my Lilibet's gears. She's still pretty good on attack set for 200-something speed. Not too bad. Um, she's on portrait. She's gonna go in on the Arby. We're gonna extinct him. 
and then we're going to focus down the Aeola. Now, for Aeola, I'm going to bring in ML Kawazu as a dark bait so that she'll keep on hitting him. Uh, he currently has indestructible gators, which is fine. Uh, when Aeroz does his AoE, when he does his S3 onto Kawazu, then Kawazu will proc. We can one shot the Aeola or the Aeroz, depending on what we want to. And then the match is as good as done. For the bottom team, we have Flan, Sidom, and Opsig. So we're just going to bring in a single Selene. I think my Selene is tanky enough. We should be fine. And we'll just see what happens. <laughs> It's not optimized for attack, but hey, we lost Rowana, so might as well have a little bit of fun in our last match. Alright, let's go ahead and pop off here, though. We're gonna push up everybody, and then we're gonna push up Lilibet specifically. It's a pretty slow Aeola, actually. Um, I wasn't expecting her to be faster than my Ahmed. Most Aeolas aren't. So let's just go straight for... Ooh, it's a, it might be a D-Gen RB, though. Is it a D-Gen RB? Do we go for the S2? Let's go for the S2. Okay, no, it was not a D-Gen RB. He revives. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on, this is really bad. That is a D-Gen... Wait, no, his 13k health. Okay, well, we got a uh, decrease hit chance. Kawas actually popped off. That's pretty nice. Uh, we could just go straight for the Raz here. Yeah, let's go straight for the Raz. RB just went. Uh, we had skill null, so it's fine. Kind of our fail-safe option there. Ooh, three burns detonated. Very nice. Let's go in on this RB. Oh, we do miss. But it's okay. It's okay. Um, it is not okay. We're about to get silenced and unbuffable here. Alright, we just gotta go in on the RB and hope he doesn't counter. Let's go ahead and punch him. Ooh, nice. A lot of burns. And hopefully a little bit finishes him off. Okay, there we go, there we go. We got it. That was the... Um, <laughs> little bit was too strong with her S2. Uh, but that, that RB was a D-Gen. It's just kind of squishier than I anticipated. Alright, let's go for the S2 here. And... Should be able to finish him off real soon with his little bit. Let's go ahead and just buff her up. See Ama's animation one more time. I don't get to see it enough in RTA because I don't really get to use her. All right, there we go. And she's down. So, for the second match here, Celine, can she solo this? I think so. I think she can cut here, right? We've got enough combat readiness. So, Flan's gonna go. That's a pretty fast C-Dom, actually. Okay, so we're gonna take out the C-Dom. And the Opsig is pretty far back, so... Not on Guiding Light, we can finish her off here. And that about does it. We have to finish off the Flan too, though. We can't, can't just leave her unattended there. We do get a nice little attack buff refresher. Can we one-tap her? Oh, no we can't. Close, though. Close. Okay. Should be able to get it here. Or not. <laughs> there we go. Should be able to get it here. That's a pretty tanky Flan, actually. Alright, but with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe for more Epic 7 content. And until next time, take care.